Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Chanting is more Lutheran than Roman Catholic. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. My buddy Thor, come here, boy. My buddy Thor and I have made our move over to Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Bossier City, Louisiana, and with our arrival has come some changes which make for some really good questions, which make for some really good um, video shorts. Chanting. Well, if you've not experienced chanting before, or if you're maybe new to it, if you've been in a church for a long time and you get a new pastor and all of a sudden he's chanting the announcements, well, not the announcements, but everything but the announcements, you know, you might sort of sit back and go, that seems a little bit Roman Catholic. And that would be okay, but it wouldn't be true. You see, um, chanting's been in the church it's from the Old Testament. It finds it's, it's in the, the Psalms are chanted. That's that strange Salah that you see all the time in the Psalms. Chanting makes its way into the New Testament, and we chant uh, where, where the church picked up the Psalms that they were chanting and tacked on a Gloria Patri, glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, because they wanted to celebrate the Trinity when they, when they prayed those Psalms. In the church, chanting had its way all the way into the time of the Reformation, where there was chanting throughout the liturgy, but not as much chanting as when Dr. Luther got a hold of the liturgy. You see, before Luther, uh, the priest would sit with his back, would stand with his back to the people and mumble to the, wor the words of institution in Latin to the elements. He would whisper sweet nothings. Well, he wasn't whispering sweet nothings, but he would whisper the Latin, into the verba, into the elements, the, ele the two, the, the different elements, the two elements. The people didn't really matter. The priest was all that mattered. Now, and faith, which is receiving Jesus, mattered about as much as the people did. Luther comes and adds and wants the, the priest or the pastor to chant the words of institution. Luther was the one that added that chant along with some of the other chants. And he did that in order so that the people would hear the verba, the words, so that the people would remember the words. Because when something is sung, it is the, the tune can catch you. That's why people sing the books of the Bible. That's why they, they uh, sing the ABCs. Now I know my ABCs. Uh, ads on the TV have, um, uh, have catchy jingles because you'll remember what is sung into your ears. And so the priest, no longer whispering to the elements, was singing the words of institution, chanting them. Now see, everybody remembers that Luther changed the language to German, but they don't remember that he added the chant. Um, and he did that so that you would re we would remember it, so that we would hear it. Nothing makes me more happy that when... Um, that when when little kids look up with their while while they're cray, uh, while they're while they're coloring with their crayons and sing the words of institution with me. Now, uh, why does chanting have to happen in church? Also, is a good sort of thought. It doesn't have to happen. We're free in Christ not to chant. In fact, some services in our new our, our new hymnal don't have chants in it. But chanting creates a conversation that doesn't occur in the world. Last I checked, you don't look at somebody and go, the Lord be with you, and they answer you, and also, with, you know, whatever the, the, and with your spirit, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't happen, all right? Only the church, when you enter a different world, ooh, you see, a church is an embassy for the, for the, uh, the, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Your church isn't American. Your church isn't Canadian. Your church isn't African. It is, a, it is a place where the king has set up for the delivery of his Calvary One gifts. And so that it would be otherworldly, so that it would be different. Um, chanting sort of allows that. And I don't just chant 
And you don't just chant. We chant together, back and forth, as we sing the praises of the one who brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Is it, does it hurt church attendance? Does the word hurt church attendance? Does, does the gospel hurt church attendance? Shall we deny that the gospel delivers the spirit who works faith wherein when he pleases and those who hear the gospel because of the form is something we're not comfortable with? But none of that. Someday we're going to have to talk about a universal lie in the Christian church that contemporary forms are the only forms that work. That is a denial of what has happened in the last 2,000 years. And also, a denial of the Spirit's work in the Word, which is contained in the historic liturgy. But that's a song for another time. Now, it's enough to simply say, the chant, the one that usually causes the most twitching when heard first, is Lutheran. And that it doesn't have it that, it that it seems so new to us today shouldn't shock us. Dr. Walther, CFW Walther, first president of the Missouri Synod, said that the thing that we the two things we would lose in America are private absolution, confession and absolution, and chanting. That chanting would rub the Americans wrong, that they they would, because of the influences of the Methodists and stuff around them, would gravitate away from it. Well, thanks be to God that today there seems to be a resurgence of the traditional forms. It's like if you hold jeans long enough, sooner or later they go back into style. Or the Lord's words and promises are always in style because they deliver the spirit who works faith where and when he pleases in those who hear or see the gospel. Chanting. It's more Lutheran than Roman Catholic. I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this has been another Higher Things video short.